I'm going to trade for Connor McDavid in every single NHL game. Starting in NHL 16, coming in at an 83 overall, Connor McDavid at 18 years old has got medium elite potential. Four and a half stars in puck skills, senses, and shooting. Three stars in defense, four and a half in skating, while three in his physical attributes. And in this first NHL game, we're going to get a steal of a deal. Taking a look at the entire Oilers roster, Connor McDavid's second on the team in trade value right behind Taylor Hall. And the team we're going to be trading for McDavid with is going to be the Buffalo Sabres, because I want to pull off a massive steal here. So looking at this Buffalo team, they got a lot of players with high trade values, even some similar to McDavid's. Like look at Gergensen's. There is no reason he should have that high of a trade value, but we're going to get a finesse here. Taking a look at Buffalo's picks, their first rounders seem to have pretty high trade value. So I'm going to offer two first round picks for Connor McDavid. Obviously, that's not going to be enough, but it's a good start. Next, we're going to add Nicholas Baptiste and Zach Bogosian to this deal, and Edmonton's accepting that. Two first round picks from Buffalo, Nicholas Baptiste and Zach Bogosian for Connor McDavid. Imagine if this trade actually went through. We still were able to hold on to Evander Kane, Ryan O'Reilly, and this team has Jack Eichel, even though he's not actually on the team right now. They would have just drafted him, so this would be an absolutely elite team. Heading into NHL 17, Connor McDavid's jumped up to a 92 overall. He's got medium franchise potential now. Five stars in puck skills, five in senses, four and a half in shooting, four and a half in defense, five in skating, and three and a half in physical. And it should be no surprise his trade value is incredibly high now, but look at Lucic's trade value. There is no reason it should be this high. You're telling me Lucic would have a trade value higher than most players in the NHL? I get this was like seven years ago now, but even still, this is absolutely ridiculous. And way at the bottom here, it's Leon Dreisaitl. I wonder if he's going to become a good player or not. I mean, he's got low elite potential, so the potential is there, I guess, but I don't think it's going to pan out for this guy. I think he's going to end up being a bust. So the first trade we got to go with, we got to go with old reliable, two first round picks in Sean Monaghan. It should be no surprise Edmonton saying no to that. Like, why wouldn't they? So then I'm going to try two first rounders, Sean Monaghan, Sam Bennett, and a second round pick. Once again, this deal is not going to be going through, so we're going to have to try something else here. So I decided to shake it up and go Monaghan, Frolic, two firsts in a second, but Edmonton's going to say no to this. Sean Monaghan, you're an important part to this trade, so I'm keeping you here. And then I'm going to package up TJ Brody, a first and a second alongside you to Edmonton and the Oilers. They're going to reject that trade, but the value is not too far off. So we might have something here. So I'm going to add another first round pick to this deal, but they're saying we just need to sweeten the deal just a tad. So what are we doing? We're taking out TJ Brody and we're throwing in Matthew Kachuk. That's getting the deal done. Yeah, we probably got finessed a bit, but hey, we just got Connor McDavid. But now that I think about it, Sean Monaghan, two first round, and then Matthew Kachuk, that's definitely worth Connor McDavid. Calgary's finessed them here. Heading into NHL 18, Connor McDavid at 20 years old is up to a 93 overall. Five stars in puck skills, shooting, and senses. Four and a half in defense, five in skating, and four in physical. He's got medium franchise potential, and he's on the final year of his rookie deal. He's also coming off his first 100-point season where he picked up 30 goals and 70 assists. Seeing as this was the first season that Vegas came into the league, I thought this was the team we had to make the trade with. And taking a look at Connor McDavid's trade value, it's almost at the max. While Leon Dreisaitl, I guess he became an okay player. So I'm doing absolutely everything I can to get McDavid. Three first round picks, Brandstrom and Marc-Andre Fleury, Edmonton saying no to that. This was the best package we could offer, so we're going to have to switch up to a different team. And that team's going to be the Winnipeg Jets. I know they have a bunch of good young pieces, and a lot of the players that they had on their team in this game have tons of trade value. And speaking of the Winnipeg Jets, you might not have heard. I'm trying to pass them in YouTube subscribers, and we're getting really close. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on so you can be notified of when I upload. So I think the two guys that definitely need to be a part of this trade are going to be Patrick Laine and Jacob Truba. So Laine, Truba, and two firsts are off to the Oilers for Connor McDavid and Chris Russell, and of course, Edmonton saying no to that trade. So I'll add a second. They're also saying no to that trade. But they're saying we just need to sweeten the deal. So we just got to improve this by a little bit. So Patrick Line, two first round pick, Dustin Bufflin, Jacob Truba, that's off to Edmonton for Connor McDavid, Chris Russell, and Zach Cassian. And the Oilers are accepting this deal. So taking a look at this Winnipeg team now, Connor McDavid, of course, he's going to be the number one center. But give it three years. Once Kyle Connor develops, having McDavid as his playmaker, he's potting at least 70 goals. Jumping into NHL 20, Connor McDavid's coming in at a 94 overall. He's got medium franchise potential and the stats they're looking incredible of course five stars in puck skills senses shooting defense skating and then four stars in physical so this guy's a jack of all trades but i think we already knew that and this is the first year of his new contract 12.5 million per year for the next eight years secure the bag my guy you love to see it so we got to go back to the vegas gold knights we couldn't get a trade done in the last game but we're gonna get one done in this game cody glass mark andre fleury mark stone over to the oilers for Connor mcdavid al montoya and brandon manning and some reason edmonton was willing to accept so i didn't want to give up all 
all that. So Cody Glass, Mark andre Fleury, March so in two seconds for Connor McDavid, Al Montoya, and Mantha. Once Edmonton saw that trade, they knew they had to jump on it. Cody Glass for Connor McDavid, that seems like a fair deal. So now that you got Connor McDavid as your primary playmaker alongside Max Petre and Mark Stone, that's going to be an absolutely elite team and they probably would win a Stanley Cup. But then again, they did just lose their starting goaltender. So who knows? So here we are in NHL 20. Connor McDavid's up to a 95 overall. Of course, he's got franchise potential. The stats, of course, they're elite. We don't need to go over them anymore, but it's time to make a deal. And surprisingly, Connor McDavid actually doesn't have the highest trade value on his team. Leon Dreisaitl does. I think the only reason for this is Dreisaitl's contract's $4 million cheaper per year. So I think whatever scale they use for ranking players is saying that the $4 million cheaper that Dreisaitl is, is better than the three overalls less he is. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm making any sense. I think I am. I probably just confused half you guys. Ignore what I said. So I decided for this game, we're going to do it with the New York Rangers because I know they have a bunch of nice young pieces and I want to make an incredible deal here. So the first trade I'm going to offer is going to be three first round picks and Jacob Truba for Connor McDavid. It should be no surprise that the Oilers aren't saying yes to that. So Truba and Kako for Connor McDavid. They want to say yes to this, but I know how many good young players we have on this team. So I'm going to make an even better deal than this. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. We're getting a deal done. So Truba, Kako, a first round pick, Mika Zibanejad, Ryan Strom is off to the Edmonton Oilers in exchange for Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, and the Edmonton Oilers are accepting that deal. Not only did we just get Connor McDavid, we just got Leon Dreisaitl too. This New York Rangers team would be absolutely elite. Yeah, we lost Zibanejad and Truba, and they're two very important parts to this team. Kapo Kako, they can definitely live without him in exchange for McDavid and Dreisaitl, and Ryan Strom, they ended up losing him in last year's free agency, so I think the Rangers come out on top in this trade. So here we are in NHL 21, Connor McDavid up to a 95 overall, high franchise potential now, finally upgrading from medium franchise. And taking a look at trade value, McDavid, he's gonna have a higher trade value than Dreisaitl in this game. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I didn't play franchise in this game, but now that I'm playing it today, what's wrong with this trade system? Somebody explain to me, why is the trade value for first round picks so high? Based on this, I was like, oh yeah, a first round pick in PK Subban, that should definitely get Connor McDavid. Nope. Okay, I mean, that's reasonable. Like, I mean, a first round pick in PK Subban should not get you Connor McDavid. But based on what the trade value here is, it definitely should. So Holt, Ryan Murray, PK Subban, and two first round picks. Look at where my trade value is and look where Edmonton's is. This should be a slam dunk easy trade then. Nope, they're not accepting that. So I decided to take PK Subban out and put in Mackenzie Blackwood. Obviously Edmonton wants him and the trade value increases a bit more. Nope, Edmonton's saying they don't want that. So Hughes, Heischer, two first, and Severson over to Edmonton for Connor McDavid and then we'll take on James Neal's contract. Look at the trade value. Ours is almost maxed out while Edmonton's is so low it's ridiculous. They're still saying saying no to that. So I got sick and tired of this and said Hughes, Heischer, Holtz, Severson, Ryan Murray, our top five players in trade value for Connor McDavid, James Neal, and some AHL player. Edmonton wasn't vibing with that. So I decided, all right, we'll go over to Tampa. We'll switch teams up. Kucherov, Johnson, and two first round picks for Connor McDavid. They're saying no to that. So Kucherov and Hedman, this should easily get the deal done. Look how high our trade value is compared to Edmonton. They're saying no to this. Kucherov and Hedman for Connor McDavid, and they're still saying no. All right, well, you know what? I'm turning the salary cap off. This is getting a bit ridiculous. Kucherov, Hedman, Braden Point, Steven Stamkos, Mikhail Sergachev for Connor McDavid, taking on James Neal's contract and two AHL players. The Edmonton Oilers are saying no to this deal. They think the value is too far off the table. Yeah, too far off the table for us. Connor McDavid's one of the best players of all time. This deal is stupid. There is no reason that this deal shouldn't be accepted. So in NHL 21, I couldn't get a deal done. They didn't accept anything. So here we are in NHL 22. Connor McDavid, 95 overall, medium franchise potential. The stats, we already know what they are. And this is the first year with zone abilities, and he's got the zone ability wheels. Doesn't really affect anything, but I just had to mention it. And based on what happened in the last game, I got sick and tired of it. Salary caps off for the rest of the video. I don't care what we're doing. We're getting a deal done. And I also need a team that has a bunch of really elite players that have high trade value. So Colorado, I'm using you for this game and the Leafs are being used for the next game. And yes, Austin Matthews is getting traded. I have to do something. So the very first trade I'm offering based on what happened last game, Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr, Miko Rantanen, Gabriel Landeskog, and Bo Byram for Connor McDavid. And then we'll take on Zach Cassian's contract and Kyle Turris' contract. I was incredibly surprised when I saw Edmonton would accept this deal. So I tried to do the deal without Bo Byram. They were also willing to accept that one. So I decided to take Landeskog 
go the deal. So it's going to be Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr, and Miko Rantanen. Edmonton's going to accept this deal. They think they're getting an absolute steal because they are. They just got Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr, and Miko Rantanen. So we definitely didn't need to give up as much as we did, but I just wanted to get Connor McDavid. And based on what happened in NHL 21, honestly, I didn't think these trades would go through. So here we go, NHL 23, the current game. Connor McDavid, 95 overall, medium franchise potential. The stats are absolutely elite, so let's get a deal done. So of course, right off the bat, straight up, Connor McDavid for Austin Matthews. Edmonton's going to say no to this deal, so I'm going to throw them a first round pick. Who cares about picks? Edmonton's saying that's a bit low for them, so we can definitely get a deal done. So I'm going to throw in an extra second. Now, I probably could have got away with giving them like a fourth or a fifth, but nah, I just want to get this deal done. Austin Matthews, Toronto's first round pick and a second for Connor McDavid. The Oilers are accepting the trade and Connor McDavid, welcome to the Toronto Maple Leafs. If you guys want to see more videos like this, comment down below who I should do next.